Starbucks. It's inescapable. If you live in a big city, you're sure to find one at every corner. Coffee shops are everywhere, especially in shopping malls where you're likely to find multiple coffee chains eager to provide you with your much needed morning, afternoon, evening, nighttime, all the time caffeine fix. In fact, the coffee frenzy runs so deep that it's not at all uncommon today to find retail convenience and grocery stores that offer their customers complimentary coffee on arrival. And as it turns out, there might be a very good reason behind the abundance of coffee in places where people tend to shop. My name is Hashem and I'm a medical doctor and this is my YouTube channel where I publish weekly videos that explain how the brain works with an emphasis on optimizing brain performance through science. Subscribe and hit the bell icon if that's the kind of content that you'd like to see more of here on YouTube. According to a new study by an international team of scientists led by Professor Depian Biswas at the University of South Florida, caffeine intake can significantly modify shopping behavior and hurt your wallet. In a series of experiments, the scientists studied how consuming an average of two cups of coffee affected consumer shopping behavior. And here's what they found. Caffeinated shoppers outspend their non-caffeinated peers by up to 50% in pure dollar terms. Furthermore, caffeinated shoppers also purchased more stuff, with the average coffee drinker buying three and a half items compared to the two and a half items purchased by shoppers who were not caffeine intoxicated. It should also be noted that the kind of stuff that the two groups of shoppers bought were also very different. Caffeine doesn't just make you buy more and spend more. It also makes you buy more things that you don't actually need. Think scented candles, head scratchers, and microwavable heating pads with uh, natural herbal aromatherapy. The reason that we're more likely to make these impulse purchases after a strong cup of coffee <laughs> is because, well, in fact, caffeine seems to promote impulsive behavior. This isn't the first time caffeine has been associated with impulsive behavior, however. Take this 2017 study by researchers at the University of Cambridge, for example. According to this study, higher caffeine intake was significantly associated with problematic gambling earlier age at first gambling, higher personality-related impulsiveness, and more impulsive decision-making. And an even older study from 2005 found that people who were dependent on caffeine, defined as drinking the equivalent of four cups of coffee a day, scored significantly higher on tests of impulsiveness and were more likely to show sensation-seeking personality traits. In other words, caffeine intake can predict and perhaps even increase the likelihood of partaking in risky behavior. Nearly everyone knows caffeine is a stimulant, but not nearly enough people know exactly how caffeine stimulates us. Caffeine structure is similar to adenosine, which allows it to attach and block adenosine receptors in the brain. One of these receptors is the receptor for adenosine monophosphate, AMP, which is a byproduct of ATP breakdown. As you go about your day, your brain will consume energy in the form of ATP, which is then broken down into AMP. As that AMP builds up in the brain, it attaches to adenosine receptors and sends signals to the brain that reduce alertness and increase drowsiness. This is why you get progressively tired throughout the day until you finally fall asleep at night. Caffeine, however, blocks this signal, increasing alertness and decreasing drowsiness, therefore keeping you up at night. However, in addition to increasing alertness and decreasing drowsiness, Caffeine can also modify behavior, mainly through the release of vast quantities of dopamine and glutamate in the brain's prefrontal cortex and nucleus accumbens. In a study published in August 2022, the authors concluded that though the quantity of dopamine released by caffeine was much lower than that released by amphetamines and cocaine, it was still similar in quantity to the dopamine released by intravenous nicotine, THC, morphine, and alcohol. Many of you might know this already, but in case you don't, dopamine plays a crucial role in the brain's reward system. Let's now take a closer and perhaps more creative look at how this happens. This is Carrie Bradshaw, a writer and fashionista living in New York City. Some people would describe her as having a shopping addiction. There are two major things that drive Carrie Bradshaw's behavior, her necessities or her needs, which include food, sleep, and her need for shelter, and rewards, which are really anything that motivates her, causes her to learn or elicits any pleasurable feelings. 
Little does Carrie know it, but her so-called shopping addiction is actually e-learned behavior that's driven primarily by dopamine. Most people wrongly think that it's the reward that drives dopamine release in the brain when it's actually the expectation of reward. When Carrie buys a new pair of Jimmy Shoe shoes, it's the anticipation of buying the shoes that leads them? to dopamine release. And this dress I saw at Bergdorf's is going to cost me a month's rent. For more or less dopamine to be released in the brain, something unexpected needs to happen. In other words, the actual reward value needs to differ from the predicted reward value. If Carrie receives more compliments from her friends than typical, while she is wearing her new shoes for the first time, this higher than expected reward will boost dopamine release and signal to the brain's memory, learning, emotion and reasoning centers. Her brain will more strongly associate buying new shoes with social approval and therefore her well-being as social approval and well-being are deeply tied together further intensifying her shopping addiction and spiraling credit card debt. This is precisely why we make different decisions we wouldn't typically make when we're under the influence of psychoactive substances. Psychoactive substances screw with our brain's prediction apparatus so that our dopamine reward centers are no longer able to accurately predict reward values making them perhaps sometimes seem more worthwhile than they actually are. Even worse, psychoactive substances can make us hypersensitive to rewards, so that when we do actually eventually get that reward, our brains miscalculate the reward value, and we end up learning new unwanted behaviors, all while downplaying or ignoring the risks of that behavior. Whether or not we like to admit it, caffeine is a psychoactive stimulant. According to this 2019 study, caffeine was found to boost attention for reward-related stimulus information, resulting in study participants responding faster and more accurately to stimuli associated with rewards when receiving caffeine versus placebo, which I guess can potentially make you buy more things that you don't actually need. <laughs> Just something to think about before the Black Friday sales begin later this month. And that wraps up this week's video. If you'd like to learn more about why online shopping makes us so happy, head over to my free Substack newsletter to read all about it. You should find a link to that in the description below, where you will also find links to all the studies I referenced in this video. Until next week.